This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, well, now let's talk about ethics. And ethics are critical for any accountant. Uh, and SEMA, just as other accountancy bodies, SEMA has its code of ethics. And it's because there are so many pressures on business. I'm not suggesting for one moment that businesses are corrupt or anything, but businesses are there to make a profit. And people do deliberately or accidentally and do things which are unethical. But the accountant, the accountant, people trust accountants, people need to trust the accountants. It's important that the accountant does act ethically. And by ethically, uh, they act with integrity. They are honest. Accountants don't cheat. Accountants are telling the truth. Accountants are objective. You know, businesses uh, often, they want to report perhaps a higher profit. They promise the shareholders that uh, the profit would increase. And they might push for the accountants to somehow make the profits look better than they really are. But accountants are objective. Their job is to report the truth about what's happening, not to make it look better or worse, not to introduce bias. Professional competence and due care. Nobody's perfect. Anybody can make a mistake. Accountants can make mistakes. But the accountant, we expect to be competent, that they know what they're doing. We expect they're taking due care. Confidentiality, pretty obvious. But they're not going to start revealing information they shouldn't. And that overall, they do behave professionally in everything they do. Those ethics that are required of any accountant. And it says if you want a new mnemonic opic, uh, objective, professional, competent, professional behaviour, integrity, confidentiality. Uh, to try and avoid the risk of uh, unethical things happening, there are professional safeguards, appropriate safeguards, and you've got them on the next page. The profession itself uh, demands um, education and training. People have um, sat exams in order to have qualified in the first place. Uh, CPD requirements, they're required to continue to get training. Uh, the profession sets regulations and professional standards which accountants have to abide. And the profession will monitor the quality of professional work and they have these disciplinary proceedings um, if ever they discover there is a, a unethical behaviour. Uh, within the business itself, they need to have internal control systems, they need to review things. They need their own disciplinary procedures, they need their own code of ethics. And they need, in key areas, to have separate review and reporting. So measures from the profession itself, measures from within the business. And then the individuals themselves have their own responsibility that they do comply with the professional standards. They know what they are, they're up to date. They keep proper records of any areas that they're at all think might be contentious, that they're worried about. They're mentoring, they help each other, they train people working for them in ethics, and that they contact SEMA with any dilemmas to get advice. If they're not sure what the rules are or how something, they're not sure how it fits in with the rules, uh, they're not sure what to do, then they should contact SEMA for advice. Uh, the next two pages here, uh, I'll run through quickly the headings, but you must read the detail properly, you must. But the sort of threats that can be, conflicts between the requirements of the employer and the fundamental principles. If an employer is wanting you to do things that are either against the law or against seamless professional standards, 
then what should you do? Get advice from the employer, the seaman. The employer should have a formal dispute resolution process. If necessary, they should take legal advice. The preparation and reporting on information. I said a bit ago, uh, on the last page, the um, accountant should report honestly and objectively. And it's just as I said uh, on the previous page. Um, it, there's always that danger that the employer wants you to make things look better than they actually are. To keep shareholders happy, for example, to keep the bank happy, whatever. Well, look at the ways you should deal with it. Consult with your employer, with your superiors. Explain the problem. Consult with those in charge of governing the uh, business. Consult with SEMA. <coughs> it's your job to report fairly objectively and honestly. Have sufficient expertise? Mention that. How do we make sure? Getting advice, getting training, negotiating more time if needed, getting help, taking advice. If you haven't got the expertise on a particular area, get advice from someone who has. Uh, financial interests. Again, I said I wasn't going to read all this and effectively I am doing it. But the situation where the accountant or a close family member has a financial interest in the business. Got to be careful, can you still be objective if you're actually making money out of the business other than just your normal salary? Oh, look at that. Um, uh, being paid a bonus based on the financial statement results which you're preparing. There should be a remuneration committee. Other people determine your remuneration. Disclosing the relevant interests so that everybody's aware that there is this interest, you or your close family. Or again, consulting with superiors or with SEMA. Inducements. From one extreme, this can be uh, actually given an outright bribe to do something. Or, more commonly, People are giving you gifts to try and get you to do something. And it, there is that danger that as a result of these, even if they're just genuine gifts, that you then feel beholden to those who have given it you. And, and it may threaten your objectivity, or it may be uh, threatening your confidentiality. You say things you shouldn't be saying. Uh, you shouldn't accept the inducement. Anything other than a trivial gift, you should uh, you should refuse it. And again, you should inform relevant third parties and take legal advice if necessary. Now, giving office it shouldn't work the other way around. Perhaps it's less likely, but you shouldn't be um, making uh, that sort of uh, gift or inducement to your employees. Again, that just shouldn't happen. Uh, confidential information goes without saying. It's your job to keep confidentiality. And whistleblowing um, is an extreme, but where you need to dis uh, consider disclosing information even though there's no obligation from statute or regulation. If you think something is that serious, that it's in the public interest for it to be revealed, then that's what whistleblowing is. Um, you'll see uh, on the right hand side, this disclosure should be based on legal obligations, whether it will affect members of the public, how serious a matter it is, how likely it is to repeat, how reliable the information is, and why the employer doesn't want to disclose it. But subject to that, well, you, if you know your employer is doing something detrimental to the public, then this idea of whistleblowing. However, although I read most of that to you, do read it again carefully, well, read the whole chapter again carefully uh, and check your clear 